evening, everybody. I'm book two. Welcome to Jack's Literary Corner. I am Jack, and as you guys notice, I've been trying all these different, like, um, I just had the word, um, different openings, but none of them, they all still sound bad to me, but I guess I'm just too critical of myself and my tone of voice. But anyway, it's that time of year, the mid- year the middle of the year although actually it's not anymore because that would be in june and it's july so i'm a little late with this mid-year activity but i have been watching these lately i've been because i was on vacation i didn't have access to youtube so i was catching up on my booktube videos and um a lot of people have been doing the mid-year wrap-up um not wrap mid-year freak out tag so I thought I'd do it, and then I think after this I'm going to um, get the questions for mid-year check-in tag, because it's, that's kind of, it's kind of the same thing, it's just different questions, but basically wrapping up your um, what you've read so far this year. So here is the first one, the mid-year freak-out tag. Alright, so the best book you've read in 2019 so far. And I am very tempted to say King of Scars because I like I really love King of Scars. I really enjoyed that book, and I know a lot of people did not enjoy that book. And a lot of people were disappointed by the book. But that's not the one I'm gonna say. And I'm trying. Where is the one that I was gonna say? I know I took it out. Um, I have so many. I brought out so many books here. Um, where is it? What book? Um, oh, here it is. I decided to go for one that most people probably would not, the genre that most people probably would not say, um, which is a classic, is the classic genre, and that is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky? Forgive me for, I still don't know how to pronounce his name. What... I really need to get an audiobook version of this so I can actually hear the pronunciation of his last name and all the other Russian names. But um, this is a book I actually started in 2018. I started reading it. And I have this weird habit of, like, I get interested in starting books. I feel this desire to start reading a book. But then some of them I end up, like, I'll start it, but then I won't get back to it right away. It will take me, like, a year, or or maybe I'll, or maybe less than that, or maybe more than that. It varies. And I, you know, and then after, and then I will get really into the book. I will become more engaged in the story and work on and be inspired to finish it. And that's what happened in this book. I started reading in 2018, I believe, and then finally came back to it this year. Um, and it, to be fair, it was at the end of 2018, I think. Or if I'm actually, I might have started this year. I don't know. Actually, I think, no, I think it was 2018. I don't remember. It's been a long time, but I started it, I started it way before I finished it. And then I came back to it. But this is basically one of the Russian classics about a man who is a guy in his, he's like early 20s or late teens, like 18, 19. I think he, although I think he's in his early 20s. He's a poor student um, to the point where he has lost, he doesn't have any money. He's horribly in debt. And he comes with this hackneyed plan to get out of debt by going to a pawn broker, trying to pawn some, you know, trying to pawn some stuff off, but then he is going to murder the pawnbroker and steal from them. And steal from her. And the pawnbroker in the, in the store is a female, is a woman. And the first part of the book is him kind of, like, he's trying to debate about doing this, and he's very reluctant to do it. But he's desperate. So he goes through with it. And then the rest of the book is basically him dealing with that. And being very philosophical and contemplating about the whole situation. And realizing he's actually murdered someone. 
and he's worried that the police are going to catch him. And so it's kind of like it's kind of like a tall tale heart kind of thing, where he's like reasoning with himself not to, to tell the police, but the guilt is really is getting to him. And there's also a subplot of his sister. She has two men who have blackmailed her into marriage. And he is trying to get his sister out of this. This was so good and so captivating. Now, I do believe it's not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody will love this story. And it's and it can be a little tedious at times. I don't like to say the word boring. But I can understand why some people would use the word boring to describe this. But I was not bored. I was not bored at all. I had such in a good time reading this book and getting lost in the story and I was just so wondering is Raskolnikov um I don't know if I'm saying that that's our main character I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right is he gonna get away with this is he gonna is the guilt gonna finally give is he finally gonna give into his guilt and tell and confess that he murdered this woman is he and I was a little morally conflicted because on the one hand I was kind of ruining for him but then on the other hand, I knew he murdered someone, so I shouldn't be rooting for him. And then the whole subplot of his sister was also very interesting. It was like, you know, was she going to get out of her situation? Or was she just going to marry this one guy for the sake of her family? And because sometimes these classics end very depressingly. It's just for the author to make a point. And it's very disappointing because for some a modern reader who's used to YA novels who in the end of the, at the end of the day they always end up happy or at least they're bittersweet. But a lot of times these these and this does kind of still end depressingly. I'm not gonna tell you how it ends. I'm just gonna say the ending is like is kind of bittersweet. But it's a little. I was content with the ending. I was happier with the ending than some some of us classic books, the classics I've read. Um, it is the names, you know, it's a Russian classic, so there are hard names pronounced. And in Russian literature and in, you know, in their Russian culture, they will say, like, your first, it's like, basically, they will talk to, address you as your first and middle name. So there was a lot of repeating to try, not only trying to figure out how to pronounce these names, but also, like, there were two names that you had to figure out how to pronounce. Um, and like I said, I can't, the writing could be a little tedious. The writing style is not for everybody. Um, but it was such an intriguing story, and, you know, I just kept wanting to know, you know, like, how things are going to turn out for these characters. And these are such compelling characters. Now, there are times I, I do agree. I, I can see also where our main character can get a little annoying himself. Um, because he just so philosophical and he's a bit arrogant at times and cocky and kind of paranoid. But of course, I would be too if I were in this kind of situation where I was worried I was going to get caught for killing, for murdering someone. But it's, it's such a good classic, you know. I mean, again, it's not everybody's company. If you're more into the, oh, and I like how it's kind of set up with the chapters, like it's divided into several four parts and then you have the individual chapters but um it's it's just a very engaging read and the chapters are also kind of short too some of the chapters are a little short too um and just you just can't help but want to know what's going to happen how things are going to work out for these characters so that's the best book that i've read so far of 2019 okay the next question is the best sequel so far, best sequel you've read in 2000 and, okay, I think it, that means 2019. So, um, and that is Legendary by Stephanie Garber, and no, I've not gone to finale, that is an answer for one of these questions on here, um, Legendary by Stephanie Garber, and like most people, I do agree, the series is, I, you know, it has gotten, the, this trilogy has gotten better and better, um, but I was not one of those people who was like, oh, the second, the first book, 
Caraval is just okay. Like, I love Starla as a main character. I think because I can relate to her. And I almost, I can't help but go to that place about. Oh, so maybe I would be an annoying character too. Because, you know, when you relate to a character, or maybe this is just me, when I relate to a character, I can't, and then people criticize that character or find that character annoying. It's like, would you find me annoying if I were the main character? Not that it shouldn't really matter because who knows if I will become friends with any of you guys on here, become close friends with any of you guys. I mean, maybe that will happen one day. So I really shouldn't go be worrying about that and we like who we like what we like so I'm just a very insecure person kind of pathetic so, pathetically so um but anyway this was even better we go deeper into the world of Caraval we kind of learned the history of Caraval so the first book is basically about these two sisters Scarlet and Tell Scarlet and Donatella their mom is dead and actually I think their mom left I think their mom left them or I, I can't remember if she died or loved them. I will have to definitely reread both these books. And they live on this island with their abusive father. And since they were little girls, they've always heard of this magical thing called Caraval, which is a traveling carnival slash circus. And there is this game that these the people who go to Caraval will play. It's, it's kind of a scavenger hunt type game. And Scarlet's always wanted to go, and both she and Tella have, you know, they will, they have written letters to the guy who runs all things, Legend, like, hoping one day he'll come to their little, their island and take them, whisk them away to Caraval. But, unfortunately, as you get older, things like that, you start to become cynical and you stop believing and stuff like that. So Scarlet becomes this way, but Tella still believes in Caraval. And so Scarlet has, her father has arranged a marriage to a, like a noble or a duke or something. I can't remember this rich guy. And she's thinking, oh, this is, I can help get us, get us out of this, get us away from our abusive father. Which, what's really twisted about what their father does is what he will do is when one of them, one of them is bad, he will punish the other one because he knows how much they care about and love each other. So instead of punishing the one that did the bad thing, he will punish the other sister. It's in the process of that is just sick and twisted. You know. So anyway, Scarlet finally once again writes to Legend one last time and receives a reply. And she, with the help of the mysterious sailor Julian, find a way to trick trick Scarlet into going with them to Caraval. And they arrange it to have Tella get kidnapped. And Scarlet and Julian must go to Caraval to rescue her. And that ends, and unfortunately, and then that ends up being the game. Because, you know, that Tella gets in way overhead because she can actually, she is the, the thing that they have to find to win the game. So it's such a person. I love the concept of this game. I always love the concept of stories with games and people trying to figure out things and puzzles. Which, although I'm not a big fan of thrillers, of the thriller genre, but I do like it when they have that in like fantasy and sci-fi where characters have to play games to figure things out and to survive and help their loved ones escape the bad guy. Um, now, of course... The, and now the second one, I can't really tell you much about it, but the second one is from Scarlet Tella's perspective. And like I said, you go deeper into the world of Caraval and you learn a lot more about this world and how legend came to be and his story and his background. And there's a bit of a suggestive love triangle in this one, but it's one of those where, like, the girl, in the end of the day, if the girl, if our main character, if Scar Tala was thinking clearly, she, I mean, like, she knows this bad guy, this guy's dangerous and evil and stuff, but it's one of these things where I feel like she's drawn to him as well. But it's, it's such an engaging, this is even more engaging than the first book, and Tala is definitely an interesting, much, even more intriguing character, and unfortunately, yes, yeah, Characters like Tella are more likable because they're more fun and you know, they're more, you know, adventurous. 
And I think a lot of people would love to be like Scar, like Tella, more so than like Scarlet. Because Scarlet, unfortunately, she is the cautious one. She is the safe one. She is the one who will, is more practical and will do what's necessary. Although the irony of that is usually people like Tella are the more invent, more in, you know, with the romantics and the passionates and will fall for, you know. But interesting enough, Tella does not believe in. She does not believe love exists. She has become cynical about love as an adult. But it's so fun. And I do, I am eager to read Finale, but I have not gone around to it. I have not bought it. And I keep, like, I keep going back and forth. Because I always, when it comes to, like, series, you know how in the U.S., the hardbacks come out first. And they're more expensive. So it's like I keep doing, do I wait for the paperback or do I just buy the hardback? I mean, but I am also in, you know, but I am also, I am also not one of those people who's very, like, particular about that. Like, my books don't all have to match when it comes to a series. Because I've, like, a lot of my R.A. Salvatore books that I've recently started collecting are not all matching. Some of them are mass market paperbacks and some of them are the hardbacks. Um, and my Stephen King, the last books five and six of the Dark Tower series are the trade paperbacks and then the first four books are mass market paperbacks so I really I honestly don't care about you know I mean I can understand why people because it does look weird and if the mass if the book is the mass market book sometimes really looks small compared to your other compared to the other my other ones so you end up not always being able to see it but anyway, um, so I don't know if I'll I just buy it now. I mean, if I, if my mom and I go to, um, Costco or BJ's and if it happens to be there, I might buy it. You know, I might have my mom buy it. Because I don't have, I'm not the one, she's the one who carries the Costco and BJ's card. So I might. Although, no, actually, well, I, this time, the last couple times I've been going there, I've been making, I've been buying it myself. And I don't have... I don't have a card for those stores, so I might buy a Finale if I happen to see it at one of those places because that's a lot cheap, a little bit cheaper than Books a Million or Barnes and Noble. So, although I won't ever get a book from Barnes and Noble, not that I, not as in I would never shop at Barnes and Noble again. As in, there's no Barnes and Noble close by. Then the most recent Barnes and Noble is like an hour away, and the only time we might go to Ra go up to like the Raleigh area or like to one of the those places is if you know going to the airport or something. Um, but anyway, so this so this is the best sequel of 2019 that I've read so far. Legendary by Stephanie Garber. Okay, enough time about that one. Um, so new releases you haven't read yet but want to. Question number three. So, I don't have any of those books with me. Um, actually, I have one of them. So, some of these are books that I read the first, you know, some of these are books that I, that I read the, uh, the first book in the series, but I'm, like, I had a good time and I enjoyed it and I want to read the next one. I just haven't gotten around to it and I don't know if I'll actually buy it because I don't, I didn't buy the first book. Um... And then one of these is for an author I'm just kind of getting into. Back back into, I should say, because I was already into the I already loved the author when I was, you know, early in my teens. And so I'm trying to get back into the author. Like, I want to fall in love with the author again because they're, you know, their story. I liked their stories before. Okay, so those books are... Good King by Holly Black. I loved the first one. Um, it was really fun. It was hate to love, and I do like, I am a fan of that trope. It's one of my favorite romance tropes, um, next to Unrequited Love. And it was just, it was, you know, it was just, it's fun. I do want to read Wicked King. I mean, I'm hoping it'll be at the library already, but I mean, although I haven't gone to the library lately, because like I said, I'm trying to read this. All these, of course, I keep adding to my collection every time I go to the bookstore. Um, so it kind of defeats the purpose. But anyway, that is the sequel where we, where, and of course, that means the aftermath of what happened at the end of the first book. And people, 
and it, I have been, you know, and as other people have said, it's not a romance. It has a hate to love trope, but I feel like it's more of the, like, you're hot, but I hate you kind of situation. Um, Red Scrolls and Magic, but first I want, I finally finished the Bane Chronicles, but I want to read Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy, and then I gotta get to Lady Midnight, and Lord of Shadows, and the Heir of Queen, Queen of Air and Darkness, so I gotta get to all those, but first I've been told that I should probably read Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy first. first before I get to Lady Midnight. So I want to get that one done. So I can't, I don't know if I can really read Red Scrolls of Magic right now, guys. I mean, I did read the Bane Chronicles. So I might be able to read it. I don't know. But like I said, I want to get to Lady Midnight and um, that Dark Art Mrs. Trilogy first. But I do want to read that. And then the only one that I actually have here that I want to read that I technically am already reading um but I haven't finished it, so I'm counting it for this question. And that is Priory of the Orange Tree by my first and take it, Samantha Shannon. I do have the bones I do have the bone season. I just haven't started it yet. Um so I went ahead and started to start this one, which is basically it's hard to solve the plot in this book. There's so much going on. It's kind of like Game of Thrones where there's so many different plot lines going on, political machinations. Um, it's basically about two kingdoms, east and west. Um, one of them loves one kingdom. The west, I think, is the one that is all about the dragons and loves dragons. And then the, the east are the people that fear dragons. And their queen, Sabrin, her family, it is, they believe that her family line is protecting them from this evil dragon or wyvern. Um, which is dragon-like creature. Um, I can't remember his name. What is his name? Let me see. Um, I can't remember what the the. I can't remember the dragon's name. Um, or what they call the, like, the Dark One or something like that. Um, protect him. And our, one of our main characters, Iad, has, she is a priestess. And who, you know, and she has come under, she's gone undercover in Queen Sabrin's kingdom to protect her. Because all these assassins are trying to kill her. Um, because, like I said, they believe, you know, there are some, the nameless one, that's what they call them. That's what they call the wyvern, the nameless one. Um, so, Ed is protecting her, and I think this is the romance that is the female-female romance, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then in the West, our main character, Tane, she is hoping to become, she has always wanted to become a, um, sol like, a soldier type person that rides dragons and stuff like that, and a sea soldier or something, and she has all these trials to complete to do, to do that. And they, like I said, that, this is a hard book to solve. There are so many plots going on. Um, but they all, but both East and the West are afraid of the nameless one. And they are starting to fear that he is coming. And it's prophesied that he will, the nameless one, he will come back. And his followers, like his general, are starting to come back and start to get started, start to prepare for his return kind of situation. But it's so, it's like such a cool, you know, so far I'm really loving such a cool, interesting concept, but it is very complex and intriguing and engaging. But I'm having a great time with it. I just haven't finished it. I'm not even at the halfway point yet of this book. So I'm counting it on books I haven't really gotten to 
which I've started, but I haven't gone very far in, put it that way. Okay, so, um, and then Descendant of Crane, I've been hearing a lot about that, that's another one I want to read. Um, and the last one is Finale, which I've already mentioned, the final book in the Caraval Trilogy. Okay, so next, question number four. Most anticipated releases for the second half of the year, and I was trying to go ahead and look through the internet and see if I could find that one, find some, but I don't know which ones I'm sure, like, the sequel to Children of Blood and, Blow, Blood and Bone, I'm definitely interested in. I like the first book, um, although I'm slowly kind of moving on from that, um, I'm trying to think. I'm sure there are other ones that are coming out. Like, I'm sure Cassandra Clare has books coming out as well. Um, but the only one I found that I was most excited about, which it's kind of funny because it's one that I haven't even gotten. Like, I've only read the first book. I'm starting the second book. But I've already read the second book once before. And that is Winds of Winter by George R. R. Martin. The, um, that is the book six, I believe. Second. Okay, so I guess I'm all dick on me. I thought she was calling Sophie, my dog. Um, for some reason, my name sounds like Sophie. Um, but anyway, like I said, so the only one I could, you know, I was trying to pick one that I'm like, I will actually be ready to read when it comes out. But I was having trouble finding them on the internet. So, um, and I also went to good rates too. But again, not that wasn't super helpful either. I mean, it was helpful, but, you know, it was hard to, like, I couldn't pick which ones. Um, and now, question number five is biggest disappointment. Now, this, even this is, like, not necessarily the biggest disappointment. It's just, it was the only one this year that I was, like, eh about so far. Um, not that I loved every single book I've read. Not that I was super excited about every book I read. You know, it's just that was the only one that just was, like, the law for me. And that was The Handmaid's Tale. I finally got around to reading that. And it was good. I mean, it was, you know, it's just, I'm sorry, but it just didn't excite me as everyone else, you know. Maybe because I've heard so much about it. So maybe, again, as I've said this before, maybe I am influenced by hype to an extent. So, you know, I was, like, hearing about it, and I kind of was, I was just trying to get through it. So it wasn't as much as thrilling or as exciting. It was interesting, but just didn't do it for me. You know? So, I wouldn't say it was a disappointment, but it was not exactly, like, the most exciting, the best book I ever read. Um, oh, and it's by Margaret Atwood. Oh, I did not answer this question. I totally forgot. Um, okay, I have a book for this one, then. Hi, Rascal. What's a book that I have? Rascal, my doggy Rascal's here. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, books that like surprise. Um, I don't, I don't know. Oh <gasps> yeah. Um, I was, I mean, I was apprehensive about Kings of the Wild, but I really have been enjoying that one. Um, Pirate of the Orange Tree is still coming great. And has been quite the, yips. Um, and I have been enjoying, um, Oh, I guess another disappointment was, um, The Last Wish. That was another one that was just, like, eh. Like, you know, it was good and everything. I'm glad we were introduced to the world of The Witcher, but it was kind of blah for me. Um, 
kind of Monte Cristo. I, you know, I, you know, I was apprehensive about that. I was worried I'd be bored by that. But I am not. Although I haven't read in a while, I've taken a extensive break reading it. But I still was, you know, I'm still really enjoying it. I'm, you know, having a really great time. So as you can say, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I don't know if there's any disappointments as far as any surprises as far as like, oh, I thought I was gonna love this book, and then it turns out I didn't. Um, so I don't, it's kind of hard. I don't have any really answers for those kind of questions. Um, okay, so favorite new author de debut or new to you? Now, these, I just picked some authors that were new to me this year. I mean, first, the two I, you know, because I can't really... So I just ended up picking because these are the books I'm reading for the first by this by this author for the first time. So it's not a debut, but well, it might have been a debut at one time. But um, Cinda Williams Chima, The Demon King. I'm really liking the book. It's not. It's like so far this year I haven't read any authors. I'm like. Oh my god, there you're such an awesome author. I just love you. Um, but I mean who knows what's gonna happen by the end by next by the rest of this year, so I don't really have an answer for this one. I guess I just picked some authors. But the second author I picked, going by my answers to the previous question, it's kinda like a bit hypocritical of me to say that author because um but the guy who I don't know if Andre Andre Sapowski I don't know the guy who wrote the Witcher series I guess I can't really say um well maybe I guess I could say Dostoevsky I really loved that book um and it's my first time reading anything by that author and I'm all I'm really liking Tolstoy too I've been reading War and Peace. Oh, that's been slow going, too. So, because even this author, I'm, I wouldn't say that they're my favorite. This is the first one I picked because they were new to me. So, I really don't have an answer for this question either. You know, because so far I haven't found an author that I've absolutely fallen in love with and progressed and have read a lot more than one of their books. So, I don't exactly have an answer for that question, except for, I mean... So, newest fictional crush, and that, although uh, this year, I haven't read as much from this book this year, but I just went ahead and say, said um, said him, Hadrian Blackwater from um, the volume, There Are Mia Revelations, this is the first volume, Theft of Swords, and I think why I'm crushing hard on this character is probably because it's the first time I've read a fantasy book where the characters are my age. You know, where the main the main character I should say, because I mean there are a lot of characters like in um, Game of Thrones, for instance, and um, or you know Stephen King writes some characters that are pretty close to my age, and um, so and. Julie Morelia, some of her characters, and Robin Hobb, some of her characters, but, you know, this is, but I'm, but I just totally think Hadrian is awesome, he's charming, he's likable, he's just fun, although I'm really liking the guys from Kings and Wild, you know, which is typical for me, because a lot of times I do like, a lot of my favorite actors are, like, my dad's age, you know, a lot of the ones I have a crush on. So, that would be right up my alley, those guys in Kings of Vile. I mean, depends on how old they look, um, and how fat they are, because, you know, fat and gray they are, which, no, I shouldn't, you know, it, it doesn't matter if they are overweight, because it shouldn't, because, but I got, you know, I'm shallow, you know, I mean, unless you carry, you know, if you carry your, you know, but anyway, but yeah, he's charming. He's likable, and he's just—he's—he's, he's, you know, you can't, you know, he's the lovable scoundrel type. 
and I have a theory about what his character, what we're going to find out on his character. Because I know that there is a, one of the books, um, The heir of Navron. I'm wondering if there's some connection between Adrian and whoever the heir is. I don't know, but I, either way, I think there's more to him. He's more than just some regular guy. I think he might be have some royal blood in him or something. But I love him, and, you know, and then, and he's also a good friend. So, next is newest favorite character. I would say Hadrian again. I'm going to say Lath Lamor. Where is that book at? Um, did I forget to grab it? I think I did. I think I forgot to grab it. But, Lock from the Lies of Lock and Mora, Under Seas and Red Skies. Basically, the gentleman, Lock from the Gentleman Bastards. Another character that's charming and likable. Suave, debonair, although I'm nervous that they're going to, you know, I'm hoping, though, since it's written by a male author, it won't go into the direction of that guy doing this, that stupid thing of pushing the girl away and being like, and deciding, I'm going to be a douchebag because, for your own good, because I don't want you to like me anymore. And I don't want to have feelings for you anymore. Which feelings do not go away, you dumbasses. But, um, guys always do, you know, when it's female-oriented story, although I'm sure male authors do, I don't, maybe male authors do this too, but it, feel, it feels like a lot of female authors do that. And of course, I will probably end up doing it as well. But anyway, um, but I love Lot. I love Lot. He's awesome. I also do love, um, Mia's awesome too, another favorite character. She's so badass and you know, she doesn't give a crap. But she also has a heart and she's a very compassionate person. You know. So anyway, there's a lot of so books that made you cry. Easy answer none. I don't cry in books. My heart is made of stone. And I do not cry on books. I cry in movies. Because, like, I don't have to use my imagination. It's actually physically there in front of me so I can actually see it. So I'm more prone to cry during a movie and a TV, or a TV show than a book. Um, and then, book that made you happy. Like I said, King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I know a lot of you were disappointed, but I loved it. You know, and maybe it helped that I was told ahead of time that it wouldn't be a book where it's only from Nicola's perspective. And I'm trying, maybe because it's been so long since I've read the original Grisha trilogy. But... You know, I don't see what everyone's criticisms are about how it's so out of character for these people. And it's like, I, I don't see it. Um, but I was never overly attached to the Grisha trilogy. I was more attached to Six of Crows duology. I be like, I become more attached to that one. And I actually finished that duology this year. The Crooked Kingdom. Um... Which, I guess that could have been my best single by Chose Legendary. So anyway, um, but I, I had a great time. I like, it's full of public intrigue, and it's interesting to see these characters deal with all the stuff in the aftermath. And I think a lot of people had issues with a certain character coming back, how they came back. I, it's like, I want to know why, like, specifically, but I don't want to know at the same time. Because I loved it. I had such a great time with King of Scars. And, of course, Nikolai was as awesome as always. Um, but it just, it's such a, it was a fun look and fun to go back into that world. Even though I wasn't a huge fan of, um, the Grisha Trilogy. <laughs> Okay, so, and it's also great to see these characters and what they are going through now and how they're dealing with the situation they are in now. And I totally ship, um, what was her name? I can't remember her name. Zo Zoya and Nikolai. I totally ship it. I'm totally team Zoya and Nikolai as a couple. Um, and, okay, so, the next one is most beautiful book you bought so far this year or received. Again, I'm going to say, um, where did I put it? Where did I put it? It just had it in my hand. I had it. Where is it? 
Or they wouldn't. Oh. Sorry, I hit it. Okay, so I'm going to say, again, King of Scars. I love this cover. I love the gold design, and it's a little, there's a little bit of shine to it. And what's great is that, unlike a lot of hardbacks, this part is not naked. Yes, I love that. I like that it's not naked. So then I don't mind taking off the dust jacket to show this off. Because I know a lot of people, like, they don't like dust jackets. I can understand why. But if it's blank, I don't want to take the dust jacket off because it's just blank. I want a pretty cover. And this is pretty. So I think this is awesome. Okay, so, and then, the other one I chose, the knot, and that is, I decided to pick Priory of the Orange Tree. Again, I love this cover, I love the orange and the yellow design, and the dragon is really cool. Um, I just think this, the image is really cool, and really pretty. I like it. And the same thing that I think two yellow and gold books, I still do not like, I still am with everybody else about that, um, the last on the class books, that cover, it's just so weird, it doesn't, it doesn't look right. I mean, it's pretty, but it doesn't fit with the rest of the series, as far as the, the aesthetic. Okay, so next is, last question, question number 13. Oh, I bought both those books. The question was, most beautiful books you've bought so far this year, or have you have received, or 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 books that you've received, and I picked those two for books I bought that are beautiful. And then the last question in question number thirteen: What books do you need to read by the end of this year? Okay, so um. So yeah, I kind of want to read this one this by the end of this year. This is one of them, Theft of Swords, and I think I'm gonna bring it with me because my nephew is the one who came to visit for Fourth of July. Their birthdays are coming up. They both have July birthdays, so we are going to visit them next weekend. Um, I want to progress. <coughs> this <coughs> is excuse the dog. <coughs> um. This is another series that I want to continue because I know they're actually making a TV series of this. They're working on it. I think they're post-production, so I want to get really far with the series. Like, um, at least read all the ones that I have before I start watching the show. Because what's going to probably happen is that all of a sudden I'm going to be more interested in watching the show. Because sometimes watching TV shows is easier than reading a book. I know that's blasphemous, but although these books, unlike Game of Thrones, the Song of Ice and Fire series, these books aren't as dense. Um, although now they do have mass market size versions of these of these books. I've seen them at my books a million. But, edition, but they're not that, I mean, or at least not, I mean, I've only read the short story collection. So I don't know how the rest of the series, but it doesn't look as big as, or, or as dense as Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire series. So, um, I want to try to get this done by the end of the year. Oh, um, Malice, I want to try to get this one done, so I finally have an excuse to tell my mom to order the next ones, Ruin Valor. I can finally have them because for some reason they never show up at Books A Million. Um, but this is the first book in the Faithful and the Fallen series, another multi-perspective story. Um, so much has happened. And, and there's so many characters. Um, I want to get it finished first. Um, and Count of Monte Cristo is another one that I definitely need to, I want to finish this year, but that probably won't happen. So, I, you know, so really, I guess I, this is not a book that I absolutely have to get to by the end of the year. But it's one I want to get to by the end of the year. Oh 
I'm going to try to. This is basically about this guy. It's a, it's a French classic about this guy who gets framed for a political crime, being a Bonapartist, basically a supporter of Napoleon Bonaparte. And he get he gets arrested for a night and he's in in this prison for nineteen years and he finally escapes. Um and basically decides to plan out his revenge and it's like a very intricate revenge plot. And he just he really takes tears these people takes these people down who who basically put him in this position in the first place. And coming up with the whole Count Monte Cristo identity and everything like that. And it's so good. And so much has happened. So much happens in these books that is not included in the two hour long movie starring Jim Caviezel. Which is a great movie. I mean it's the reason why I was interested in the book in the first place. But there's so much going on in the story that's not in the book. And like I said I want to get this done by the end of this year. But I don't know if that will happen. Because it is a dead book. Um, God's Grave, I feel like I need to read this by the end of the year because the third, the final book, Dark Dawn, will be coming out this year, finally. Um, so I need to get to that as well this year. It makes a young girl trains to become an assassin after her parents were murdered. Well, her dad was murdered by the government for treason, and then her mom and baby brother were put in prison. And her mom eventually went crazy and killed herself. And Mia, our main character, trains to be an assassin at this school for assassins. And it's brutal. It's people when people die, they die. It's very gory and such and like. And she also also controls shadows. She creates these kind of shadow. She has um. And she has this shadow puppet cat who will eat her fears. So that's how she's able to become a bloodthirsty assassin. And it's just really cool. It doesn't shy away from aggressiveness. But this is one I want to get to this year. Um, I don't know if I'll finish this one this year, but I do want to read a little bit more of this one. So I can finally get to Lady Midnight. I mean, like, these next few, and these next two are books that I don't know if I would get to or not um, by the end of this year, if I will finish them. But Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, basically, mostly from Simon's perspective. And it's about his time at the school and his relationship with Isabel and with all the other characters. And if you, you know, if you've read the wow. To finish the series, you know what happened to Simon at the end of the series, a Mortal Instrument series. Um, and this is his life now, and how he's dealing with that, and how he's really struggling with that. And the people who care about him are also struggling, particularly Clary and Isabel. And he's kind of starting in a way, he's kind of starting over. And I really like the model that, he, that they chose for his character. Um, but anyway, this, it's so far I'm really liking it. The stories are cute, very interesting. And again, I have to remind myself that YA, the writing style of YA is a little different from adult because I'm getting more into adult books. Um, so I might go also try to get to this book by the end of this year, but I don't know if that will happen. I mean, hopefully, I won't make the same mistake I made with Bane Chronicles and like not get to it for years. Like not finish it for several years. So I have read the first two, first three short stories. So when maybe when I get back from Virginia, I might read some more, or maybe right before we leave Virginia, I might read a little bit more, like at least one more. Which um, this brings me to I need to get to Lady Midnight. But like I said, I have to read Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy first because there are things in there that refer to things in this book. Um, so this is actually about some characters that were introduced in the last couple books in the Mortal Instruments. And that 
and it's their story. It's a different character. It's their story now. And I think I've heard that something to do that they get mixed up with the fairies. I think I think that some I think I think that's what I read that they end up getting mixed mixed up with the fairies in this this story. That I, I read it in the in this, and I do believe like there's a whole parabody par, parabati romance in this one. Like parabati, they're not supposed to be together in that way romantically you know, but they develop feelings for each other, which I don't get that logic. I mean, what better motivation than when you love someone? And it's no, and it's no hard because it's the thing, it's no different. It's a little, very, only a little bit of a difference between a love between, like, people that love each other, like, siblings or something versus people who love each other romantically. I mean, yes, it's different, obviously, because, but I don't, I don't feel like it would hurt to love your paradigm romantically as well as platonically. Like, have that kind of money. It would even give you even more motivation to protect each other. But I guess there are people, the challengers are worried that if you get too emotionally involved, it will make you weak. And, you know, because you might be worried about that person constantly. But anyway, I love these. I love the, I love the new, like, the new spines on her books. And I don't know, I might one day rebuy the other books. And then, um, Empire of Storms, I need to get to. So I can finally stop. Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass, I need to get to that. So I can finally read Kale's, the novel that's all about Kale. I want to read that one, so I need to, but I need to read Empire of Storms. So I can read, although I could potentially probably read both of them at the same time. But my struggle is that I'm kind of, like with Cassie Clare, I've kind of moved on from Sarah J. Mass. Like, it's not as, like, oh my god, I have to absolutely read the next book. You know, yes, I like the story, and I still enjoy it, and I still hold, and I still want to keep reading, but I'm not, I don't want to keep reading, like, right now. I don't absolutely have to read them right now. I'm not, like, super excited. And part of the problem is also that I don't like the main character as much anymore in this case in this story like the main character Selena just kind of is getting on my nerves lately but um I don't I'm, of course I'm really, I'm also not a character reader I'm more of a plot driven reader so and next is I got to read this one it's a non-fiction about John Adams and it is my brother-in-law's copy. I've had it for years now, and I need to get to it so I can give it back to him one day. So I can finally give it back to him. Um, although, every time I talk to him and tell him, I'm sorry, I will one day get to it. He's, you know, he tells me, he's, don't worry about it, because he's not eager to read it yet. And he's been assuming he will never want to, he won't be eager to read it until, like, the boys are grown and, you know, and are don't need as much attention from Jess and Ryan as they do as babies. Not that they're babies, they're toddlers. But, um, this is basically John Adams' biography by David McCullough. I believe he's very famous for writing biographies about the American Revolution. Because he also wrote 1776. Like, American, I guess American history, because he also wrote on here, he's Pulitzer Prize winning author of Truman. And that's not American Revolution. That's later in our history. So, I mean, but my problem is nonfiction can be kind of, kind, of, kind of dry. That's why I do like memoirs. Because they're not as dry. They're, you know, because they're more personable. And then I need to get to Boy. I finally need to get to Voyager. What I did decide to do is I'm going to go through the series, read all the books, but I'm giving them to Terry. And I gave her the, I mailed her the other books for her birthday gift. I put it in the box with her birthday gift. I mailed, I mailed the first two books. And then I'm going to read Voyager, and then I will give this one to her at some point. And either way, I have to read it before next summer. Because I'm going to probably see her next summer. I mean, ideally it would be awesome if I could read it before... October, because we're gonna go to Florida, we're in doing Universal. I'm gonna do Universal with her, 
Um, so, I don't know. So, I might get to those. So, it would be awesome if I could, but I don't know if I will. I don't, because I guess I don't, when I have a deadline, I'm, when it comes to my reading, I don't, it doesn't help. It makes it worse. It puts too much pressure on me. I mean, if it's like a deadline, like how school deadline kind of situation, then maybe. But because I know my friends aren't going to, you know, my friends aren't, I'm not going to get a bad grade for my friends if I don't, you know, if I don't finish this and give this to her. But it's, like I said, I, I'm trying to get out of the habit of, of going straight to fantasy. Um, and so I need to, but I would love to read this by October, but who knows if I will or not. Um, it's a pretty chunky book. And then the last one, I don't even think about it. Stop it! No, 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 no. Sorry, my stupid mic. The last stop. The last one is *The Kitchen God's Wife* by Amy Tan. This is the um. This is um my sister's book, so I want to get to this so I can finally give it back to her. Um, ideally, maybe I should think about giving this to by November. If I can give it back to her, um, when they come for Thanksgiving, but I don't know if that will happen. But anyway, and then I also have another Amy Tam book that I want to read, saying, and then I eventually will give it to her as well. But again, I'm not, I'm not very good with deadlines, um, because there's not you people aren't pushing them, pushing me to to get these books read. I can't, I, apparently I can't really push myself that well. So, um, anyway, I don't know much about this. Um, I know that Amy Tan is, writes a lot about mothers and daughters. And she is, she wrote The Joy Luck Club. And she's also trying to use American, so its own voices, her, her books, and um, I don't know much what this one is, what this one is about, if it's, if it's a mother and daughter situation, I think it's a mother and daughter situation. So I guess... This woman is telling her her daughter her story, and which, in a way, a lot of her books can seem to have that. Well, actually, I can't really say a lot of her books because I only read one other book by her. Um, although the Bone Setter's daughter kind of sounds similar in a mother telling a daughter a story. But I think when I might, I think when I read that one, I'll, when I, after I've read that one, I will give it to my sister. I mean, you would think that would be another motivation for me to, you know, get rid of books and make room by getting books read and then giving them to other people. I mean, sometimes I have this, when I decide right then and there to read the book and grab it off the shelf and start reading, then yeah, it might work. But if I have too much time to think about it, then I won't get to it. But anyway, um... So, yeah, so those are the books I need to finish. And sorry, once again, this dragged a little bit. I was also, the tiredness all of a sudden hit me again. Like it did, you know, all of a sudden it just hit me. So I was trying to get through this without getting lazy I want, without being dragging while filming this. So sorry it became like slow and, te you know, but of course that's nothing new. You guys know my videos are always slow and tedious. I keep talking and yakking, yakking. All the time. So, I'm going to let you go. That is my mid-year forget tag. And I will probably do the mid-year check-in tag. I don't know if I'll film it tonight. But, I mean, it doesn't get dark. Right away in the sun, we're going to get... The sun's finally going to come out around 7, apparently. So, I could film another one after I eat dinner. But I'm, I, I'm starting to get hungry again. So, I need to do that. Although, I'm tempted to, since my mom and dad are not home, I'm tempted to bring my plate up here. 
because I can't bring it up. Although, the risk of that is if I make one spill, then I will be in so much trouble because basically I'm breaking my mother's rules. And she just doesn't want me to spill anything on my carpet. And I'm likely to as much do that as it is for me to spill something on my shirt. But so far I've been lucky and I've been careful. But I have disrespected her rules. So I'm always trying to be careful make sure I don't get caught. Because I know it's wrong. But so far I've been careful. You know, I've never spilled anything. And, but, you know. But anyway, enough making myself look bad. So, if you guys, I will copy and paste these questions on the Dropbox below. If you guys are interested in responding, feel free to turn in the comments below. Or just do a video of this tag if you have a channel. And as always, I hope you guys are enjoying your reading. And I will talk to you later. Alright, bye!